Okay guys, so the next set of pathways we're going to talk about is the acoustic pathways. So the acoustic pathways are actually pretty tricky. Um, it's just one of those that you have to practice a couple times to really get it down. Um, so within the acoustic pathways, you're going to notice I have a couple of sections within the pons and a couple within the midbrain, just because there's landmarks in all these that we got to look at. Um, so before we start with our different pathways, let's actually find some of these landmarks and know what we're looking at. So first, if we go on the rostrum medulla, the main thing we want to find over here is our cochlear nuclei. So our cochlear nuclei, there's both a dorsal and a ventral cochlear nucleus, are found out here kind of in our inferior cerebellar peduncle peduncular area. Uh, you'll also notice here I have the superior olivary nucleus um, marked. The superior olivary nucleus, it's incredibly important, but it's actually difficult to see. So there's a huge inferior olivary nucleus here. Superior olivary nucleus is kind of in this region as well, and then of course more superiorly, but again, pretty difficult to see. If we move up into the caudal pons, we have to find our nucleus of seven. So right here, this is our um, facial nerve nucleus, I'm sorry. Um, this is our facial nerve nucleus over here. And remember you see your facial nerve, which wraps around the abducens before moving forward. So our facial colliculus is out here. Also in the pond, we have to know our lateral lemniscus, which is the track all these paths will go through. It's kind of found out in this region, so it's not labeled in here. But remember, our medial lemniscus is this big structure here. Our lateral lemniscus is more over here. Mid ponds, again, lateral lemniscus is going to be kind of out here. Our um, the big things we need to note here is a giant trigeminal nerve coming out laterally. And we need to know that our motor, our motor nucleus of five is medial to that. The sensory one is lateral, but the motor, which involved here, is medial. So we keep moving up in our caudal midbrain. So now we're up to our caudal midbrain. This time we can actually see the lateral lemniscus labeled. And interestingly, you can actually see it traveling into the inferior colliculus, which is where these pathways would go. You can't see the brachium of the colliculus, but in reality, it's a large branch or large fiber path coming out that way. Keep moving up. Uh, we need to note our superior colliculi in our rostral midbrain. And then we get to the diencephalon area. We have to be able to identify our MGN, or medial geniculate nucleus of the thalamus. Okay. So now that we have those landmarks placed, we're going to look at all these different pathways. Um, so I kind of break it down into these five pathways uh, to really help me learn. So the two primary ones are your dorsal and ventral acoustic striates. These are for sound. So your dorsal acoustic striate, which is also known as the direct pathway, and some books will refer to it actually as the high road. Remember, dorsal or direct. This has to do with monaural hearing, so it is not going to be bilateral. It's monaural hearing, and this is just for general hearing, just general sense of hearing that you get. Versus the ventral acoustic striate, also known as the indirect, is a binaural or bilateral projection, and this is for sound lateralization primarily. The olivocochlear system is a system we'll talk about that is used to um, fine tune your hair cells and your tectorial membrane so that they can listen to exact pitch. It can also protect your ears in a loud environment. And then also there's sound dampening pathways that reflexively protect your ears in loud environments. Finally, there's a reflexive pathway which is going to be used for um, things you've learned about such as the tectospinals, which is responding to startled sounds, or vestibular ocular reflex, which has to do with coordinating your eyes and heads and movement. All these reflexive pathways also will come um, as part of the acoustic system. So, let's start with the dorsal acoustic striae. So, for most of these pathways, what's happening is you get sound coming into your cochlea and affecting your inner hair cells. That sound then goes through my spiral ganglion, which is a pseudo-unipolar cell of the eighth nerve. And because this is the dorsal or direct pathway, it's traveling to the dorsal cochlear nucleus. Again, because it's direct, it's not going to spend any time synapsing down here. It's going to go straight superiorly, contralaterally. And it's going to travel up through the brainstem, through my lateral lemniscus, all the way through my lateral lemniscus, until it reaches the inferior colliculus. At this point, it'll synapse in the inferior colliculus. It'll then leave from the inferior colliculus through the brachium, or arm of the inferior colliculus, to go up to my median geniculate nucleus of my thalamus. At that point, it'll synapse again before moving to 
area 41 or um, the transverse temporal gyrus, which is the primary auditory cortex. So that's the dorsal acoustic striae. And remember, that's primary sound. If we compare that to the ventral acoustic striae, which is uh, the binaural pathway used for lateralization. That's also going to come from my hair cells, go through my spiral ganglion. But because it's ventral, it synapses on the ventral cochlear nucleus. And you'll notice that all projections from the ventral cochlear nucleus go to bilateral superior olivary nuclei. So this is why it's the indirect pathway, because it's going bilaterally and to superior olivary nuclei before ascending. This point then is going to follow the exact same path as the dorsal one did. So it's going to ascend all the way. It's going to synapse in my inferior colliculus, go out my brachium, up to my MGN, and then the area 41. Same on this side. All the way up lateral lemniscus, synapse in inferior colliculus, out the brachium, to MGN, to 41. Remember, this is more for sound lateralization than anything else. Um, I do want to note in both of these pathways, there are some random decussations throughout here. So the inferior colliculi have decussations. Uh, there's decussations within the lateral lemniscus. This is really important just because you need to note that this means the only place to get a monaural hearing loss is to damage your cochlear nuclei. Otherwise, there's enough collaterals that usually you don't get a central hearing loss unless it's bilateral. Okay. Next thing we're going to talk about is the olivocochlear system. So the olivocochlear system is actually efferents from the superior olivary nucleus that travel to the outer hair cells. Remember the outer hair cells are a special type of hair cell that can actually raise or lower the tectorial membrane. So this helps you to localize sound. Uh, again, say if you're in a crowded room and you hear your name across, you'll localize to that pitch so you can concentrate on your name. Um, say if you're in a concert for a while, you're going to cognitively um, raise your tectorial membranes to protect your ears. Um, so this actually um, will get input both from the cortex. So some of these fibers will actually descend. So there's some descending fibers that are coming to do this. And then there's also some that come in through the spiral ganglion. Again, because we're going to superior olivary nucleus, we have to go to the ventrocochlear nucleus. And we'll go to SON before going out to the outer hair cells. Next one we're going to talk about is the sound dampening reflexes. So beyond just being able to raise and lower your tectorial membrane, you can also dampen sound by using these two muscles, tensor tympani and stapedius. These are innervated by craniometer 5 and 7, respectively. So this does not, this is not a cortical thing necessarily. And this was this can have descending, but this is primary reflexive in that. It goes through my spiral ganglion, again to my ventral cochlear nucleus, and again, remember ventral cochlear nucleus always goes to bilateral SONs, and then at this point, it's going to send fibers up to my seventh nucleus, so fibers up to my seventh nucleus, facial nerve nucleus, and to the motor nucleus of five, or motor nucleus of trigeminal. At this point, then they're going to travel out their respective nerves to innervate their muscles. So this one, the seven, travels out through the facial nerve till it goes to innervate the pedius to help dampen sound. And this one and five will go out through my trigeminal nerve to innervate tensor tympani to dampen sound. Last thing on here I want to talk about is there's also some other reflexive pathways that actually come from the cortex. So you remember you learned about tectospinals, which have to do, again, with turning your head when you're startled the vestibular ocular reflex, which has to do with um, coordinating head and eye movement. Again, it would make sense when you're startled, this is happening. If you remember, both of these actually start in the um, superior colliculus. So what will happen is sometimes you can stimulate these other ways, but also sometimes these are stimulated again by a large sound. So say you hear a large sound, it's traveled up my dorsal and my ventral pathways. It reaches area 41. Area 41 then is going to send a descending fiber to my superior colliculus. It'll synapse there, and then it goes down the respective pathways. So we'll say this one's going to tectospinal, this one's going to vestibular ocular reflex. I'm not gonna redraw those guys, but that's how that works. So quick recap. Dorsal or, in, dorsal or direct 
um, has to do with monaural hearing, general, which is kind of a generalized hearing picture. It's going to come from inner hair cells through spiral ganglion to my dorsal nucleus, and then because it's direct, it ascends without hitting superior olivary nucleus, going to the contralateral lateral lemniscus, inferior colliculus, brachium, MGN41. If you compare that to the ventral, which is the indirect pathway, it does binaural um, hearing and lateralization, that's going to go to my ventral cochlear nucleus, bilateral SONs, and then ascend through the same pathway, lateral lemniscus, inferior colliculus, brachium, MGN41. If we look at our olive cochlear system, this is either descending or inputting fibers that have gone to my SON, and then I'm going to send efferents out to the outer hair cells to fine-tune the tectorial membrane. You can dampen sound by having reflexive stuff come in from my inner hair cells, synapse on the ventral cochlear nucleus, go to bilateral SONs, and then go to 7 and 5 to innervate the pedius and tensor tympani, respectively. And then finally, we also have some reflexive things coming down from 41 to hit my superior colliculus and then start my tectospinal and vestibular ocular reflexes. Those are the acoustic pathways.